Yeah. So, Jim, I'm a, I'm a gold bug as well as you are, and um, I expect higher prices as well. But we see all the time, the last couple of years, actually in, in this surrounding, at, at this time right now, gold should be at three or four thousand dollars. But we see the big players, we see GP Morgan, they also paid a fine, I think one billion dollar for manipulating yep. the gold price, the silver price. They manipulate everything actually, you know, yep. and right. they always go along with it and they always just pay their, their fine with the money they made profits on the, on the, on the trading side. So sure. do, do you think they will still in the future manipulate the gold price? So we will always stay below $2,000 because I made prediction of five to $10,000 in this decade. You said yep. 15,000 till 2025. So yep. um, what is when GP Morgan and all the big players on Wall should say, hey, no, never again, uh, we manipulate the price of gold, of silver, of everything actually. So they can corner the price all the time. Right. Well, the answer is they do. There is manipulation, and it's not hard to to ascertain. But the manipulation always exists, and it always fails. So, it's, it's, go back to the 1960s, the London Gold Pool. This yep. was the United States and UK and Germany, a few other countries agreeing that they would dump their official gold um, to keep the price low. Well, it, they started running out of gold, so they got rid of that. Uh, and then, in the late 1970s, the United States. This was after. Nixon suspended redemptions after the price of gold had broken away from $35 an ounce and was going up. The United States sold a thousand tons of gold between 1971 and 1980 and got uh, the IMF to also sell uh, almost a thousand tons of gold to suppress the price. It failed. By January 1980, the price of gold was $800 an ounce. So then the United States stopped selling gold. The United States has not sold any official gold uh, since 1980. We've stuck at around 8,000 tons. But we got everyone else to do our dirty work. So in the late 1990s, they got the Bank of England to dump to sell about half of um, the UK's gold reserves. In the early 2000s, they got the Swiss to sell a thousand tons. This caused a popular uproar in Switzerland. Uh, and then the last thing, last effort was in 2010, the IMF sold 400 tons. But it's over. I mean, they've done every one of those manipulations. Ultimately, failed. Uh, so they were tried, they were done, they did suppress the price, but they didn't last. Uh, and since 2010, that was the last time there were uh, net sales by official institutions. That was the last time. Since then, they've been net purchases. You, some individual banks in Canada have sold the last of their gold reserves. I think I have more gold than Canada did at the time. It, was, it wasn't that much, to be honest. Sure. But, um, but and they have gold in the ground, I understand. They have mines. But, uh, but the point being... Um, uh, all this manipulation has failed. So you just, so I say, hey, if you want to suppress the price, thank you. I'll just buy more cheaply. And then, you know, when, when you fail, I'll make money. Um, but anyhow, um, um, if, if this scenario from your book rolls out and we see a depression, it's, it's really like a dark winter, like winter is coming in Game of Thrones. So right. what do you expect for, for all of us, for society? And how do you prepare for this scenario? How do you prepare for the depression? Because the one thing is the, the, the monetary thing, but what else do you have to do to survive this area, uh, this, this era? <laughs> Well, yeah, right. Uh, I have a whole chapter on this in my book, chapter five, where I talk about the mental health consequences of the pandemic and behavioral changes. So yeah, it's mostly about, uh, well, it starts out on, on the virus and then the lockdown. We talk about the economics, modern monetary theory, monetary policy, fiscal policy, all the things we've discussed. But chapter five talks about the mental health aspects, which have been greatly underestimated. First of all, The virus actually penetrates the brain. It, it penetrates the membrane around the brain. So they're having cases of uh, psychotic reactions and paranoia and uh, people with uh, getting disabilities, et cetera, which is very serious and not much talked about. But beyond that, even if you don't get COVID, even if you're not infected or you've recovered, um, there are very long-term uh, deleterious mental health aspects of the lockdown. Before we continue, help us by smashing that YouTube like button and subscribe now to this channel. This shows the algorithm that you value the information and it helps us spread this message. Sharing is caring. Please like and subscribe now. Thank you. And now let's continue. Because we're social people. We like going out, going to dinner, I mean, drinks, going to a sports event, just walking around the park. If you can't do any of that, your apartment or your house becomes like a, a jail cell. It's like you're in prison. But what are the behavioral aspects of that? Depression, anxiety, anger, and it plays out in the form of violence in the streets. And so I, and I talk about this. Um, and, and by the way, in the United States, uh, but I think this is true around the world, uh, the suicide rate has tripled. The murder rate has doubled. 
uh, alcohol abuse is up, drug abuse is up, domestic abuse is up. We've, the lockdown has ca- cost more lives than it's saved. In other words, it might have saved some lives, but more people have died because of the lockdowns than have been saved. Uh, and so when you look at the riots we had in the United States last summer uh, and the riots just a couple of days ago in, on Capitol Hill, um, maybe there were different, you know, I condemn all the violence, so I don't pick sides. I would say that they should all be arrested and all be prosecuted. So I'm not condoning any of the violence, but just as an analyst trying to understand it, I say, well, you know, you're burning down cities. Now you're attacking the Capitol. You may have a political cause, but where's all this anger and violence coming from? And I attribute some of it, maybe a lot of it, to the impact of the pandemic and, and the lockdowns. Um, do you expect a military conflict in 2021, which involves the U.S.? Yeah, it's possible. I don't want to say it will definitely happen, but uh, yeah, the, the possibility is higher. And obviously they're between uh, India and China and the Himalayas and China and Taiwan and the South China Sea and okay. uh, you know, some other hotspots. So probably yes. What do you expect first, deflation or inflation? Deflation first and then inflation. But you can't, you can't bet on inflation right now because you're going to have to live through deflation first. So the, the, what I tell investors is be nimble, be ready for both, but they'll come sequentially. Okay, and what about hyperinflation? Um, cannot be ruled out. Uh, ho- uh, that's a psychological phenomena. If the central banks get a wake-up call from the deflation and try to manage the inflation, uh, it, it might be okay. But if they don't and it gets out of control, as it did in the 1970s, you know, people forget, in 1977, the United States issued treasury bonds denominated in Swiss francs. Yeah. Because nobody, nobody wanted the dollar. So that, uh, that danger is there. Um, you said the ECB will go down. Um, um, what would be the trigger? Uh, I'm not sure ECB will. I mean, interest rates. Go, uh, well, obviously, obviously, I think, I think he, that the ECB will close or the euro will just explode. Oh, no, no. I don't believe that. I've never said oh. that. In fact, I've, I've said the opposite all along. I go back to uh, 2010, 2011, the euro uh, sovereign debt crisis. You know, Paul Krugman, Joe Stiglitz, where their hair was on fire. It's the end of the euro. Greece is getting kicked out. Spain's going to quit. Northern. T- I said, no. Yeah. I said, nobody's getting, qu- nobody's getting kicked out. Nobody's leaving. They'll add members, which they have. They've gone from 16 to 19 members in the last 10 years, and the euro will remain. So I, now, now, the value against the dollar will fluctuate, of course. But uh, no, this is the way to understand the euro. It's not an economic project. It's a political project. What to do in such a situation? Inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with firsthand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only Insider Club by clicking the link below. You will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest. We have prepared a special deal for all our members where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just one dollar. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our Insider Club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income. More and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands, but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free insider club. No financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. Become active and see you on the other side.